Want to know the secrets of getting rhinoplasty and the nose you've always wanted? Keep watching. Today we're going to explore what rhinoplasty is, different parts of the nose, the recovery process, and watch to the end of the video as I'm going to give you some tips that are going to save you a lot of time, money, and make things just that much better. My name is Tony Medina and I'm founder of Soul Guide Medical. We're Korea's largest medical tourism service provider in plastic surgery, skin care, dental, laser eye surgery, hair transplantation, and other medical procedures. Hi, I'm Sunny. So I was leaving my house because I only live one minute away from our office. I walk downstairs, I'm looking at my phone, I look up and Sunny's like, hi. So Sunny's my really good friend. She's on the Soul Guide Medical Spartan Race team and she flies all the time she works as cabin crew so i was surprised to see her hi guys i'm sunny i'm a friend of tony <laughs> rhinoplasty rhinoplasty is also known as a nose job pretty much anyone can get rhinoplasty but doctors prefer if the patient is 15 years of age or older there's no upper age limit to getting rhinoplasty as long as the patient is healthy to do the procedure and the recovery process then they can get the surgery if you are under the legal age of being an adult you will need parental consent in order to get rhinoplasty there are two kinds of rhinoplasty that you can get in general. One is a closed procedure and one is an open procedure. We'll start with the open procedure. The open procedure is the modern technique where an incision is made along the columella, which is this part here between your nostrils. The nose skin is pulled back and the doctor can see what he's doing and can do the work. The other kind is called a closed procedure where there is no incision. The doctor goes in blind and tries to do the work. In modern techniques, you should definitely do an open procedure. In Korea, almost all cases are an open procedure unless there's a specific need for a closed one. Imagine you're a doctor and you're doing a closed procedure. You can't see what you're doing. You're basically asking your surgeon to go in blind and just kind of guess. So that's something that you don't want. I've seen lots of revision cases here where people paid about $500 to $2,000 USD in other countries and the results were not good because they had closed procedures. What I saw a lot of was people getting L-shaped implants, kind of look like that, and the implant goes into your nose. You have a bridge implant and it comes on your tip. You should definitely have an I-shaped implant if you want an implant at all, which just goes here and doesn't cover the tip. So an open procedure is probably what you want. A closed procedure is not a good idea in most cases. I have had rhinoplasty before. The reason I had rhinoplasty was because I ended up having a bump in my nose right over here. And I used to love playing hockey because I grew up in Canada, London, Ontario, Canada. Oh, Canada comes up. I used to love playing as a goalie. I used to get tennis balls and pucks to the face all the time. My nose really didn't take too much damage, although it didn't feel nice. But I also grew up playing as a goalkeeper in football. And I came out onto a rushing attacker once when I was 15. He deked me out, got right past me. And I lunged myself, turned around, lunged myself from behind. I stole the ball right as his foot was coming up to smash the ball. And instead of smashing the ball, he smashed my face and it hurt. All I remember was everything going black and when I woke up there were streams of blood coming out my nose. Now being a good old Canadian lad I'm like oh, I'm just gonna tough it out I don't need to go to the doctor. The result a uh, very big hump in my nose that did not exist there before. I thought it wouldn't affect me but that's not what happened. I caught myself once staring at myself in the mirror at Staples Business Depot in my hometown. I did a part-time job during university. Once I was walking past the window carrying a bunch of photocopies and I walked past it on the side and I literally shifted my position to look at myself straight on and I caught myself I'm like what am I doing and then I realized since I had my nose broken I kept shifting position every time I spoke with someone I really tried to get used to it for the next several years but to no avail I, I just hated to take side selfies I hated to take any kind of video that was on the side. So I ended up going to a top plastic surgeon here called Dr. Chemin. Dr. Chemin removed the hump via rasping. He lifted my nose just a bit to put it in proportion. I've been through the entire procedure. You know what? I love the results. If I could go back in time, I would have done it way sooner. When you go see the doctor, you're probably going to have one thing on your mind. I want to fix my nose and make it look better. But the doctor has other things on their mind. Not only that, but there's a lot of internal issues and external issues that the doctor has to consider as well, including balance, because your face is divided into thirds. 
upper third, middle third, lower third. The doctor has a lot to take into consideration. You can't just say, I, I want to make my nose better and expect a very minor procedure. Rhinoplasty is not a minor procedure. Even if you have a single procedure and that's kind of rare, it's still a major operation, so keep that in mind. Then you have to go with the external issues. The external issues are what most of us are concerned with. Number one, the bridge of the nose. The bridge is not just one part. The bridge has several parts, the sides of the bridge, the upper bridge, the lower bridge. If you have a hump like I had, you're going to have to get it rasped. Double osteotomy may need to be done. If you want a higher nose bridge, and this is very common across Asia, you may need an implant to be done. When you're talking about implants, there's two major kinds of implants. One is called a silicone implant. The second is called a Gore-Tex implant. Generally, silicone has been used the longest. There's more experts in silicone. It's very easy to place. It tends to look natural unless you have thin skin. If you're a person with thin skin, you may wanna go with a Gore-Tex implant. The reason is because a Gore-Tex implant tends to bond better with the surrounding tissues. This means that it's going to look more natural over time. One drawback with the Gore-Tex implant is that it tends to bond too well with those tissues. If you ever wanna remove it, you're going to have trouble removing it. In fact, you may not be able to remove it with the doctor that placed it in. You're going to have to find a rhinoplasty expert to remove it. Relatively, there's not much of a price difference. In fact, most clinics here in Korea don't charge a big difference between the Gore-Tex implant or the silicone implant. You may also go online and get drawn up in using cartilage. Cartilage for the nose bridge in most cases is not a good idea. There's a couple of reasons why. One, this is a big area. You're going to have to graft a whole lot of cartilage and warping may happen. Warping is when little bits of the cartilage are absorbed, they may change shape, and you don't really want that on the bridge because the bridge is such a big area. If you're going to take cartilage, you want to put the cartilage on the tip. The tip is a much smaller area. There's a lot less chance of warping happening. The second reason is because you're going to have to take the cartilage from your rib. Ear cartilage, septal cartilage is not strong enough to use for the bridge and that requires a three centimeter long incision to be placed here. It's going to hurt, it's going to leave a scar, and it's not really necessary because the implants these days, they can last for life if they're done properly and they tend to look natural. In general, you can get implants between two centimeters to six centimeters in height. The exact height really depends on your facial proportions. When you are getting rhinoplasty, it's all about facial proportions. So we focused on the bridge. Know that you may need an implant or you may need to remove a hump. In my case, I just removed a hump. I have definitely more than enough nose. I don't need an implant. You might need osteotomy on the sides. And now what do you do? Now you have to consider the tip of the nose. In many cases, people have something called a bulbous tip. You could have a downward pointing tip, an upward pointing tip, kind of like a, like a pig nose. There's a lot of different kinds of issues that you can have with your nose, but in general, the doctor is going to fix this using a procedure called tying. He ties the inside cartilage. He may need to use additional septal cartilage or ear cartilage. If he or she uses ear cartilage, <laughs> You must be politically correct. If he or she uses ear cartilage, there'll be an incision somewhere, probably along the inner side of the ear. It'll heal up over time. You won't really see a difference. If you don't have enough cartilage in your septal area or in your ear, then you're going to have to use rib cartilage. If rib cartilage is not appropriate, you may have to use donated cartilage, but that's kind of like a last resort. Don't think that using rib cartilage or donated cartilage is better. It's usually not used in first-time rhinoplasties. First-time rhinoplasties are septal cartilage usually or ear cartilage. In many cases, the doctor is going to have to create a strut. A strut is kind of what's holding up your nose. So there's a lot of internal things that the doctor has to do to the tip of the nose. Another area you want to consider are the sides of your nose, the alars. In some cases, the alars may seem too wide and you'll wanna bring them in, but you have to consider a couple of things. Number one, your alars might just look wide, but they might not be wide internally. If your alars have really thick skin on the nose, and if you wanna tuck them in a bit, if the doctor says, hey, this procedure is going to affect your breathing negatively, you don't want that. Rhinoplasty should make your breathing better, if not the same as before. Another thing you have to take into consideration when doing this area is the nostril shapes and sizes. Most people's nostrils are not the same. I didn't actually have any work done on the nostrils, so don't expect your nostril holes to be perfectly even if they weren't even before, unless you specifically tell the doctor to add this procedure. There are procedures which do work here in order to get the nostril shapes you know, almost evenly matched. When you're doing rhinoplasty, 
you have to make sure that you have the correct expectations. It's going to make you look better, but there are limitations to what rhinoplasty can do. In general, when you are doing nose surgeries, there's two kind of lines you want for your nose. If you're a man, in most cases, you want a masculine line, which will mean a straighter look. If you're a woman, you may want a more feminine line, which means that there's going to be a slight slope curving upwards. Not too big, but just a slight one. The look you want is up to you, but a straighter look will look more masculine and a slope will look more feminine. What's the recovery process like after you've had rhinoplasty? I can tell you pretty well what's going to happen since I've been through it myself. There's no real pain but it's very, very uncomfortable as it is a major procedure. You would have either had general anesthesia or local with sedation, depending on the doctor's preference. When I came to, it was about 40 minutes to 60 minutes after the procedure. I remember being cold and I remember having a really nice electronic blanket, which all Korean hospitals have. It feels amazing. And that kind of warmed me up a bit. There was no real pain, but I remember breathing was uncomfortable because I had things in my nose and things on my nose. You'll normally have a protective splint covering your nose taping under that, going to have some gauze under here, you're gonna have stitches in the columella, and you're going to have maybe some plastic strips that are going to hold your nose in place and gauze also on the inside. So there's gonna be a bunch of things in your nose, breathing through your mouth for the first few days is probably a good idea. After about an hour and a half or so, I was pretty lucid, I had a bit of pumpkin juice, I had some pumpkin porridge, which is Pretty good to have because it helps with the recovery process. Not all hospitals offer it, but uh, my company, Soul Guide Medical, we ensure that you do get pumpkin juice and pumpkin porridge. Please note, if you're someone that bled a lot during the procedure, we won't be giving you pumpkin juice because it's not good for people that had excess bleeding during the procedure. This is a really important tip. If you do this by yourself, probably gonna have to go and pick up the medication by yourself as well because normally the hospitals don't give it, it's done at a pharmacy. That's a problem because at this point, you just wanna go home. You get an ice pack as well, another tip. Hospitals will often give you one, maybe two ice packs. Make sure you get two or three ice packs. That way when one is melted down, you can put it in the freezer and it'll be cold by the time you need it. That same ice pack is going to turn into a hot pack because you can put it in the microwave after five days and can use for de-swelling later on. You really need someone to, you know, at least walk you to public transportation or your taxi or walk you home. Probably want to get a hotel or accommodation in the area near where you're getting the procedure within walking distance. Problem is that most of the hospitals are near very popular subway stations, for example, Gangnam Station. There are some motels here, but they're much harder to get into if you don't speak Korean. So we offer apartments that are right across the street from most of the hospitals. Those apartments are within walking distance and they tend to be easier. You also want an apartment where you can cook, where you can do laundry. Most hotel rooms don't have this unless you're paying a lot more than what you would be paying for an apartment. After you have rhinoplasty, you're going to need to come for at least three checkups. On the first checkup, you're going to get a basic cleaning and the doctor might check your nose. He might actually push down on your nose, which is the most painful part of plastic surgery for your nose. But you don't really feel the after effects of the procedure too much, but when he pushes this down in order to see if there's any clotting of blood, that tends to hurt, so you gotta be prepared for that. Usually around the fifth day, you come back again. You're going to get your protective splint removed, you're gonna be cleaned out, and then you're just gonna have the taping on. Each of the sessions should also include a de-swelling laser because that's going to help with your recovery. On the seventh day is when you come back to remove the tape and get the stitches taken out. This is when you see your nose perfectly clear for the first time. In my case, the doctor said, oh, do you like your nose? I didn't even answer him. I looked at my nose and I thought, it's huge. It's huge. Honestly, I didn't like it. I wasn't expecting it because my nose was swollen. Swelling goes up for two to three days after surgery and then really remains for a good month or so. Two, three weeks later, it does come down a bit. Final swelling takes one to two years to fully go away. But after about a month or so, you're more or less good. Other people won't really know that you had rhinoplasty unless you tell them. It wasn't until I told my friends, hey, I did rhinoplasty, that they were like, oh yeah, I see it now, I see the difference. Even my parents didn't know. Now, when I had rhinoplasty done, my nose was a bit high. This is something that you have to be aware of. There's something called the nose tip drop, the drop. And this is something that should happen. A doctor has to plan out how far the nose will drop. There's going to be a drop later on. And then when you smile, your nose is gonna point down and you're gonna have that witch kind of looking smile, which is not what you want. An expert plastic surgeon is going to take into account the drop. Now the drop happens for several reasons, but the main reason is one, gravity. Cartilage takes some time in order to fully adapt to your body. So after you've had surgery, 
If you think your nose looks a little pig-like, don't worry. That's how it's supposed to look. You do want to leave that extra space for the nose tip drop. Now it's time for that tip that I wanted to give you that I told you wait until the end of the video so you can get something that will save you a lot of time, energy, and make life that much better. If you look at me straight on, you're actually going to see my nose looks slightly deviated, and yet it's not. If you look at yourself in the mirror, and before I tell you this, if you don't want to hear this, if you don't want to have this in your mind, then you may want to shut off the video right now or skip to the end. If you look at yourself in the mirror and you look at your nose straight on, even if it's straight, it may look crooked to you. Now, what kind of magic or illusion is happening? Almost nobody has a perfectly balanced face. And I'm not speaking about the fact that 75 to 80% of all people on earth have some sort of deviation on their face. I'm speaking as if your nose is perfectly straight, it still may not look straight when you look at it dead on and you focus on it. The reason is because the nose tip has to start in the middle of your philtrum. The philtrum is that little dimple area that you have here above your lip. And the nose bridge has to go up to the part between your eyes in the center line of your forehead. In my case, one of my sides is bigger than the other. And my face is not actually in perfect alignment. It's a little bit like that. So if you look closely, it looks like it's curved. How can you fix that? You really can't. It's just something you have to get used to. Another option as well, how about we move the jaw and shift that? That's possible, but you definitely don't want to do that. The cost benefit is not in your favor. If you want to have a better result, make sure that your expectation is correct. If your face was not balanced before, the nose is perfectly straight, but it may not look perfectly straight. That's just something that you have to get used to. So take some photos, look at your face. If there's any sort of deviation, your facial deviation is still gonna be there after the surgery. Just make sure that you have realistic expectations of what is possible and what is not, and you'll be much happier with the results. One more tip I wanna tell you before we end this video. Please listen to your doctor. If you're coming to Korea, Korea is the center of plastic surgery in the whole world. There's over 600 plastic surgery hospitals in Gangnam alone, and Gangnam is about 38 square kilometers, which is about the size of Manhattan. So it's not a huge place, yet you have over 600 plastic surgery clinics and hospitals here. Per capita, it does the most number of plastic surgery cases of anywhere on earth. You have surgeons working six days a week. They don't take that many vacations. They have multiple patients each day, times that by 10 years, and you have the experts. So if you are coming to Korea, choose the top places and listen to the doctors. One mistake that many people make is that they want what's not possible. I've seen cases with people with very thick skin wanting to have very, very tiny and dainty looking noses. That's okay if you want that, but if it's not possible, listen to the doctor. Extremely hard to fix and it's not really going to look right afterwards. You really only want to do rhinoplasty once. The second time you do rhinoplasty, it could be double the price. Revision procedures are more expensive than first time procedures. So do it right the first time and listen to the doctors. Don't go past the safety limits. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification button. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't let you know that we actually put out a video. Share this with your friends, and if you do all that, a bunny somewhere will be happy. If you want a full out consultation, you can email consult at soulguidemedical.com. We have staff that are going to answer your questions. Remember, we need to give you lots of different options and we need to speak to the doctors first. We try to respond within 24 hours, but sometimes it might take 24, 48 hours because we need to gather all the information. We don't usually just give you one recommendation, we give you several options. If you are in the Gangnam area, come by the office where we are right now. We're pretty friendly, come on by, say hi, let us know you're coming. I will treat you to some coffee, some tea, have a game of pool, game of darts. Just let us know you're coming in advance. Make sure you do hit the notification bell because the next video is coming from Hong Kong and also Taiwan. We often go on business trips to lots of countries and that's where the next video will be from.